Hello. I want to thank you for viewing this episode of the fictional president. Now, as the video clearly has shares, what I want to share with you is three big concerns and three potential plans to address such concerns. Now, in the order that I have it uh, listed, we're going to first talk about education. There is a deep disconnect when we talk about education between the K-12 public school systems, uh, safety nets, and the social services for certain special needs populations. And in this administration, not to put uh, too, um, too negative of a uh, spin, there is a concern about uh, certain adult protections. One of the biggest things fiscally we can do is create a proactive, a proactive programs and services to meet these needs because the impact of these cer certain handicaps are very financially invasive and could potentially bring a family who's dealing with a relative with one of these uh, conditions into poverty. Not only that, the right programs and the right formulas and the right procedures in certain cases can help advance those individuals into long-term long-term independent success and we need to be able to uh, provide access somehow to these services one of the best programs that I have seen for such uh, situations is the uh, the Till program at uh, Taft College out here in uh, California. It is designed to give continuing education opportunities to the to this these kind of this kind of population and it has been a beacon of hope and a beacon of progress even down to Riverside County all the way down Riverside County California from Northern California down to Riverside County in Southern California so uh, it is something to consider as part of a, a master plan to meet needs. And we cannot just talk about this area without addressing an economic and a health component to such. We must encourage healthy living not just independent living, but healthy living with these people and work within our communities to figure out economic partnerships to assist in economic growth potential. Because not everyone who goes into a program like this is destined to remain in, a, in an institutional uh, Thing, institutional setting. We must 
like we do in uh, the K-12, uh, have individual education plans, IEPs, have something similar in the adult spectrum with these, this kind of population. It becomes more difficult in that we also need to be informative toward our, uh, our community partners. Our community partners, such as businesses, nonprofit aid organizations, religious faith based organizations, educational institutions, and so on, about the plan. Now, that is a big component to where we are lacking in our education uh, situation. We are also lacking in regulatory reforms to limit abuses by for-profit uh, colleges and universities. We have to do something about it. We have to ramp up regulations. Because this is where a large portion of our current debt comes from, is defaulting on uh, government-backed student loans. And those are extremely hard to get out of. Now, we may think our uh, our loan system, our fiscal things, and when I talk about this education, I'm talking about everything at once, but this is just education. We need to reform our education system for the 21st century, and these are, these are thoughts to do that. But then we get to health. Um, the biggest problem I find with the Affordable Care Act is that there are certain areas on regulation and it is not clear and it does not give good enough beneficial uh, access for businesses to launch out hiring. So there's some changes needing to be made, not necessarily repealing them, just some modifications. Like going from a 35 hour uh, full time uh, week label to a 40 hour is one change that needs to be done. Two, we must clarify the expectations of the uh, exchanges that are under federal participation. Also giving access to grant backing. This is a, a big issue that I have with it. I'm not some random person saying that um, we can't do something because, oh, it's against our ideals. My ideals are actually trying to find things that work, that actually are beneficial in the long term. But then we get to economics, uh, our economic situation. I know I didn't spend as much time on economics, uh, on health as I, you'd expect, but here's the landmark thing that I want to do, is I want to have the regulatory reforms that were in Glass-Steagall re-implemented, and that will drive bankers wild. Because when we got our 
uh, market collapse and so forth, it was because that was repealed, that was taken away. We need those protections back. We need to implement them again. We need to revert back to such protections. It's fairly plain, it's fairly simple, but they. But when we have Wall Street bankers running the show, we're not getting anywhere. One thing about myself, when it comes to um, doing uh, doing such decisions, fiscal decisions, I am not going to be some random person that's going to uh, hire, oh, there's, there's this one big Wall Street banker here, oh, they seem to be successful. I'm going to look at motive, potential motives behind each, uh, each nominee I pick. I am more likely to pick from a liberal state a controller or a treasurer that comes from a completely different industry of the, from the financial sector that has served in the state for a good, wonderful amount of time and I am just going randomly to a banker. I will not go for a just a random education uh, secretary pick either, I will go for somebody who has a mind for certain effective reforms, but has long history within the public school spectrum. And this will go down a similar path. The leadership we have some of them are really wonderful picks, others I have deep reservations about. And it is in our leadership that we need to recognize we have a problem. And we need to vocalize our dissenting opinion. Even, uh, even Republicans who are concerned about the direction must stand up and voice concern. I thank you for your time. I hope you have a nice day, and I will talk to you again later.